Hello, welcome. This is my second attempt at a crash course in FL Studio and how to use it. You can download FL Studio directly from their website. What you get is pretty much a full featured package. The only thing you cannot do is save and then load. You can save, you just can't load. When you do decide to buy, there are multiple editions available. The version I went for was the producer edition and I'm hoping to save up some money to get up to the signature bundle. Once you have purchased an edition of FL Studio, upgrading to the next level up is relatively cost effective. You maybe lose 10 bucks by not doing it the first time around. This is what I mean by overwhelming initially. When you first open FL Studio, this is approximately what you get. As you hover over things, you will notice over here there's a little bit of a context sensitive what are you hovering over deal and then whichever screen you're in if you hit F1 you'll get a help screen that tells you more about it these are the two best resources you have to learn what all is available in FL Studio every window seems to have extensive help as to what's available as well as a lot of keyboard shortcuts we're going to start off with the step editor. Each of these is an instrument. You can punch them in. So here we go play. So here, here, right click every two steps. Snare, snare, kick, kick, and a little bit of weirdness. There you go. Each of these channels has its own volume control and a pan. You can control the tempo up over here, dragging up and down with the left mouse button, or you can right click in the major side and enter your own. You notice we have here pattern one selected. There's only one pattern at this point in time. We're going to call this one our drum, rename that. We're going to add a second pattern. We're going to go looking for a new instrument to play that's not a drum. Everything can be found in the browser. The instruments are under plugin database generators. A good one to start off with is FL keys. It simulates the sound of a piano. Instead of just playing it like this, you can also play it using the keyboard up over here, turning that off, on. If you look up controller hardware, hardware controllers, you will see the typing keyboard, the layout of the keys, and which notes they play. You can edit a melodic instrument by going into the piano roll. We're going to add another pattern. Notice that this pattern has the same set of instruments, but we're going to give it a different tune. I can now open the playlist, select the paint brush, select a pattern, and draw the pattern in. You can also use the pencil put pieces of pattern in one spot. So we'll do a little bit of Jingle Bells, we'll do a little bit of Mary Had a Little Lamb, and then we'll combine them. Left click sets, right click takes away. Choose between pattern and song up here. Playing the song. It's not great, but it shows you kind of what's going on. Each of these channels goes out to the mixer. If you open up a channel, 
you'll see where it goes out over here see it as I move it around the default is that kick is on one clap is on two hats on three snares on four I'm gonna move them all down to one I'm gonna put the keys on two now I can have some mixing control over these guys these green things are mute. You can also mute them at the instrument level. You can also add effects to these mixer tracks. So for example, I'm going to add delay to the piano and I'm going to add a chorus to the drums. can't really tell the difference in the chorus. For working with MIDI, I'm going to start by importing a MIDI file. The first time you import MIDI data, you will want to add Fruity LSD to the project. Once I've loaded it and I play it, notice I'm playing it in the pattern. If I open up the mixer, You'll notice that everything's coming out of insert number one over here. The reason for this is each of these channels does not have a track out, it just has a port out. Fruity LSD then receives it on that port, sends it through the device that makes it a synthesizer, which converts it into sound. So this Fruity LSD is generating all the sound on this track. This means that I could create a second track add a fruity LSD over there, have it listen on port 1, take one of the instruments, have it go out port 1, and this time when I play it, it's coming out of the second track. I could add some funkiness to it. The way this MIDI has imported everything, I can go to the piano roll, but in addition to a single channel, I can also edit these guys. Tempo, you'll notice over here there's a little bit of a jump. If I play this, watch the tempo. It's at 88, and now it's at 92. You can also see things like channel volumes. For example, this is currently setting it pretty high volume. If I changed it to be right click from here up to there and I went back to play this song, watch the volume knob over here as I play it. If I wanted to cut up this MIDI file and do different things with it, it can't do it in this screen. But what I can do is bring it over to the playlist. If I bring it over right now, I'm just going to get a single massive pattern that I cannot do very much with. But if instead I go over here and I say split by channel, I now have several different patterns, one for each channel. It also got split over here, so I can rearrange this. Now I have to play it using the song side. I can now start to do surgery in here. Like for example, let's get rid of this intro bit. It's going to cut it out of everybody. And right click to delete. I'm going to move it out of the way. And select everybody else. Move them over. One of the things you can do with MIDI files now is rather than using the default wave synthesizer via Fruity, you could instead use better sounds. One of my favorites is under plugin presets, generators, har more, synthesizer, art of voice.
It's huge. You need a good big screen for this. Note that when I put it in, it's now an actual instrument. I need to get this out of the way. Here it is, it's channel settings. So it actually has to go out a particular channel. It's no longer going through the LSD. I can now start to add other instruments to this MIDI and go play along with the song. I've added an instrument, I'm adding a pattern. I'm not going to paint the pattern on yet. I'll let FL Studio take care of that. I'm going to go here to recording, record the score, figure out which keys I'm using, and let it rip. I couldn't really hear it very well. But you'll notice that it recorded up over here. Out to its own channel 3 on the mixer. Turn number 3 way up to 11. Turn everybody else way down so I can hear it. Okay, let's record that again. If I click this in, it's going to keep what I have there and add whatever I do to it. Uncheck that means it's going to replace it. I do also have a MIDI to USB device that I bought off Amazon, five bucks. It's hooked up to my oh so expensive thirty dollar keyboard I got at Goodwill. As long as I turn the volume off on the keyboard At this point, it's probably good to go into audio settings and change from primary sound driver. Notice when I press the key, it's a little bit hard. Primary sound driver has a lot of latency, so you don't hear what you're playing immediately. If you switch it to ASIO or all, and in ASIO, you choose which inputs and outputs you want to use, you'll get a much faster sound. So now I can re-record my bass line using a rail keyboard and ASIO. Much better. Up to this point everything has been possible with the $99 version of FL Studio. We're now going up to the audio recording part of it, which is the $199 version. In order to hook my guitar up to FL Studio, I use the kind of cord that came with a Line 6 uh, guitar to iPod device. Anything which converts quarter inch TRS to eighth inch TRS will work. In my case I have a mixer and the RCA outs on the mixer are what go into the line in on the computer which you can barely see going in over there. In FL Studio for audio recording you will want to make sure that you are using ASIO and you have chosen the right inputs then you'll pick a track to do the recording on. I'm going to go with number 5 because it's out of the way. For track 5 you choose the input to be the channel that the guitar is on and there you go. I, I could go in and add various effects on here to make it sound better there's a built-in thing called Hardcore, which I haven't bought yet. However, for the purposes of recording, I want to record the clean signal so I can change the effects later. So for this track, notice how it's, there's a little save button over here. This means arm the track for recording. Arm. Just audio into the, as an audio clip. That sounded pretty horrible. 
what you'll find is the audio gets inserted as a instrument all of its own under audio clips if you want to sort there it gets added to the playlist as well uh, this instrument has its own output track which is different from the input track that you recorded it on I'm going to put it on 4 I'm also going to go back to the entire list and I'm going to turn off the original guitar I've turned off the bass and the guitar that was distracting me earlier I'm going to leave on the metronome I'm going to get rid of the previous recording that I had the three steps are make sure you're armed to record make sure you've selected the right things to record up here make sure you're on song and hit play I now have to reset this guy to be on a particular output track. I can also go in and add my effects back in. Wrapping up, when you go to save this file, It'll warn you as to what you're using that cannot be reloaded because you don't have a license for it. If you save anyway and reopen, watch the art of voice over here. It's gone. It's a very effective tool if you use this on a regular basis. You will end up purchasing all the stuff that you need to use. So there's several other things I haven't covered in here. There's a crazy recorder called Edison, which does a lot of things. There is a thing called Maximus that lets you master, in other words, making it sound really good when you're doing your final song. There is exporting to an MP3 to save what you did in a form that other people can consume pretty easily. There's a whole bunch of stuff around automation clips. If you press Ctrl F8, you'll see a visual representation of all the different stuff you can use in FL Studio. If you have the patience, there's a lot of videos on YouTube on how to use each of the individual components. Thank you FL Studio for making an awesome product.